All right, there we go. We're live. Yes, we are. That's a thing. It's a thing. Mari's here. Mari! And Sherry? Hey, Sherry, how's it going in Las Vegas? You need treats. There you go. Heaven for me. Okay, you're 27 calories every four hours. <laughs> Leah's in the house. Who? Leah's here. Hey, Leah. I didn't hear it. I was making too much noise. She's always making too much noise. I am too much noise. I want you to notice that we have our desks on completely opposite directions. What does that mean? Look at the screen. I can't. I'm Yours tilts left, up. mine tilts right. Oh. I can't help that. I'm sorry. That's how it works. Carla! Carla! Oh, my God. I almost fell out of my chair. Woo! It's my fault. I made her stir fry. And then didn't remind me that it was Monday. So I'm to remind you about a whole day. Well, you're supposed to remind me that we're supposed to go live today at some point. You know, I can't remember anything. I would have eaten if you didn't hand me food. Hey, Amy, what? Don't, don't forget it's Monday and we go live today. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate you so much. So much. Now I'm going to meet myself so I can blow my nose. The stir fry is spicy. Yeah, y'all don't want to hear that. You do not want to hear that. It's like a moose mating call. One of these days, there's going to be one at the back door. How would he get over the fence? He's a moose. He'd step over it. He's not... 20 feet tall. You're right. He'll ring the doorbell. <laughs> it says knock. Can't he read? Mm -mm. No. Although technically while he was trying to ring the doorbell, he'd probably knock on the wall. <laughs> yeah, antlers, you know. Carla's at Raisin Cane's. <gasps> oh my god, now that sounds so delicious. Carla's not my friend anymore. Shush, eat your stir fry. It's not raising canes. No, it's not. It's be my stir fry. Uh-huh. There's nothing better than cane sauce on the planet. Yes, there is. Is there? What is it? Clam chowder. No, no. That's a close second, but it's not better. <clears throat> I'm just going to come and chuck something at my head. Any minute. Now, so I did finally sew that stuff together. I want you to know that took me a while. Do 
Candace. Moose are pretty large. <laughs> so you're, what you're saying is my person is a moose. Could be. Hi, Janice. Yes, I did. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to shove stir fry in my face. Okay. So this is the thing for the secret pocky. It's going to fit in there like that. Ta-da. Ta-da. Now we have to make a thing for the secret pocky. But it's partially decorated now. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, it was not my finest sewing, but I did sew it. for an extra order of bread and you would have thought I asked her to juggle cats who are on who are lit on fire. Come on, how many times have we gone to Cane's and it's been wrong? Well, that's true. They always forget some. Well, they're not as bad as McDonald's. you got to give them that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A few places are worse than McDonald's. And they don't give any fucks if your order's wrong. Well, that's what you got. <laughs> I'm talking about. Well, that's because usually by the time you figure it out, even if you're still standing at the counter, they are 50 orders away from that by now, and they don't care. That's about the size of it, isn't it? Ugh. It should be turned off now. I uh, I just wanted it to boil for a slight little bit. That's good enough. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. You put Amy up here all by herself since I have nothing interesting on my desk. Hey. So what? Good. I don't have anything interesting on my desk. Well, I'm just, I'm looking through things. And I come up with what I want to do for the pocket. Well, there's the name of a channel. What? Hellbent Holler. Where do you see that at? Hi, Christine. Oh, it's on my YouTube. Oh. Hunting Bigfoot at night. Uh-oh. Bigfoot got him, huh? Lost in the pine swamp. <sighs> oh, no. Well, that's the, that's that's a good place to kill somebody because Bigfoot did it, right? Right, right, right. Bigfoot did it. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yup, yup, yup. That's what happened. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I heard it. I heard the whole thing. Ooh. Okay. So I need to make something that's going to fit inside of there. So, how was everybody's uh, Monday? 
Mine was okay because I, did, I didn't really know it was Monday. I mean, technically, I knew I had a sale on Sunday, and the next day is Monday, but you know me. I don't pay any attention to that logic stuff. Is the next day really Monday? Theoretically. Janice had iron infusion. It, it's a very tiring day. Oh, but you'll feel better later, right? Yes, but in the meantime, no pooping for you. Oh, boy. Hi, Christine. All right. I'll move the book for a minute. Whee! Because we're working on this pocket. me I just chauffeur and sit so we both had a three-hour nap when we got home well you probably needed it Leah says work was stressful boo on that Carla says sucky I am 8.5 on the pain scale and oh I'm sorry Carla boo on all of that Rebecca how you doing Krabby that sucks, Carla, to be high on the pain scale and have to work. And then come home on the bus. Hopefully there were no proposals. That probably would have been a dead guy if he'd had the nerve today. You picked the wrong day. Uh, I guess that's what I get for asking how things went on a Monday. <laughs> uh. Okay. Alright, I trim some things up. Hi, Rebecca. Um, bet you're glad to be home and laying down. I'm surprised you're not napping, Carla. You might need one. I need a file folder. Oh, no, not a file folder. I'll just choose one from all of these file folders I have in this drawer. Do you need a file folder? Um, maybe. I don't know if I have enough. This could be a bad thing. Oh, I found the next best thing. A piece of cardstock. Do you know what the worst thing is about cleaning up your craft supplies? What? Do you know what the worst thing is about cleaning up your craft supplies? Um, putting them away? Nope. Finding out that that thing you keep buying more of because you don't have enough of? You have now 9,000 of them? You now have 9,000 of them. 9,943 to be precise. <laughs> Nina, how you doing? You never get done. <laughs> That's true, Janice. She said she was on the train and she was entertained by the Saggy Pants TikTok team. Oh, boy. Oh. I don't know what that is, but wow. Wow. All right. I'm trying to make this work. Sandra's in here. She had to go get her boobies pancake today. I refuse. I will just die of whatever I have. They're not swishing my boobs ever again.
They're so blase about the whole thing, you know. We're women and we know this hurts, but suck it up, Buttercup. She said that they were like humming or something, like humming a jolly little tune. I, I'd be like, this is not a festive occasion. Somebody's going to die today. They always have the, for me, I always found they had that look on their face like, I'm so over your shit. <laughs> well, I'd like you to stand here for 45 minutes with your boob in this contraption. Uh oh. What? Houston, we have a problem. I misplaced my corner rounders. Hold on. And I had my heart set on rounded corners, man. How do you know where my corner rounder is? What have you been doing? How much time have you spent in my room while I'm in the garage? I didn't even that thing up with it. Oh, so you were looking at all my <laughs> I'm bored. I might as well see what's here. <laughs> Janice says, well, I guess I could make up a body boob squish and song for during the or during to irritate the tech some. <laughs> right? Yeah, side booby, no fun. I could get if it was a male tech and he's like, I'm over these boobs, but women should care. You know who I imagine has it worse though? The itty bitty titty committee. Because it'd be harder to get it into there. I always wanted small boobs. I guess you want whatever you haven't got, you know? <laughs> if you have straight hair, you want curly hair. If you have short hair, you want long hair. Oh, that barely fit. <laughs> I need some ink. Nina says her night won't be over till 6 a.m. Oh. Now that we have to do laundry, they haven't been in a hurry to fix the washers. So we're down to two washers and we have, and we're down to two. And Sunday and Monday are heavy load days. Oh, dear. Oh, Leah, my goodness. That is, uh, I bet you take some naps. <laughs> that sounds exhausting and painful. I didn't even think about your uh, pacemaker, Sandy. That adds a whole new layer of suck to that. Yeah. But you all have to also understand Sandra's kind of a weenie about pain, so. Yeah, she is. We're always busting her balls about it. Hi, Mitzi. Mitzi, how you doing? Welcome. Am, do I need to close my door, else? Am I too loud? You're fine. Ah, so what else happened? What did we do? We had a sale. Yes, I had a sale yesterday. I haven't got any invoices done. I started working on them, but I'm not done yet. 
Good news, Els. You ordered the first thing. Uh huh. <laughs> totally your order first. Okay. But uh, I total everybody's order and then I pack them up and then I start invoicing. Ah. Did I order stuff? Oh my God. Seriously? You ordered the weirdest stuff ever. Oh, okay. She's going to get her order and be like, I didn't order any of this and I'm going to make her watch the video again. Oh, no. I ordered a lot of stuff. <laughs> Is it coming back to you now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the good news is everything was like 50 cents. So. <laughs> this is going to be the cheapest sale ever. It's good for you I, guys. I budgeted myself $10. And when I was done, I felt disappointed in myself. <laughs> well, it's hard to spend $10 when everything's 50 cents. I mean, not everything was 50 cents, but the bulk of the stuff was priced it at under a buck. Not the Babs, though. The Babs were more than that. Yes, Carla. The shipping's just going to kill me. <laughs> I charge her extra for schlepping it out to her desk. She does. And she plays this really neat game where she comes out and drops random shit at my desk. And then when I go, Amy, what is this? She goes, sure now! And runs away. <laughs> now It's now a hate game that's going on. Oh, Leah. Well, I'm glad that you're there. Wonder Woman juice. I like that. <laughs> wow, Sherry, she had some gumption to her. A buck, a buck, a buck, a buck. <laughs> All right. Okay. I gotta figure out how I want to do this. I need to cut that down a little bit more. Adria! Adria's in the house. Yup. How you doing, lovely lady? The next sale's going to have stuff from my stash in it, if that makes anybody feel any better. Mm -hmm. I got to clean out those file cabinets. and Her stash has gotten utterly out of control. Yeah, I can't fit anything else in the drawers. I have stuff stacked everywhere right now. It's driving me a little bananas. And I that's when I said, and that's when I said maybe I should sell some of this. I got her a full size four drawer filing cabinet. Two of them are filled with my crap. And she immediately had the thing filled. She was like, I was like, so now you just got to put stuff in here. She goes, no, I've already filled that. <laughs> Shit. I'd need two for it to work. You'd need a dozen. No, because two drawers, I only allow myself the two drawers. If I allow myself more than that, I'll never be able to craft with all that crap. Although she did, I am proud of her today. She finished the last of her pre-bags. Well, the big pieces. I got to do small yeah. pieces still. Yeah. But just, just taking that off of her plate is going to help. <laughs> Carla. Well, Carla could uh, pretty much put me out of business with my own stash. She's got her own stash of my stuff. If she I mean, decides to sell. Stash. You know who's really got a stash of your stash? Michelle. Michelle. I think she has a plan, though. See, I think Michelle buys it so that when you die, she can, make she can go, I'm having a, an Amy sale in memory. This is it. It's the last of it. That's all we have. This pack's one hundred and twenty-seven dollars. <laughs> oh, holy uh, something! <laughs> Woo! Holy boomerangs, Batman! <laughs> That's more than I charge. That's more yes, than I, think, I don't think I've ever charged more than thirty-five dollars for a really big pack. A true artist's work becomes more valuable once they're gone. Oh my God! That's what you're waiting for me to have an overabundance, and you're going to murder me. Yeah, I see yeah. the plan now. 
Sherry's in on it, I should let you know, because she lives right down the street, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I it. have no idea where Sherry lives, but the thing is, in Vegas, everybody lives right down the street. <laughs> she lives in Summerlin, or she's Summerlin adjacent as well. Oh, she so she lives near us. We go to the same Winco. Uh, we go to the, some of the same places. When we went to Winco the other day, she was at Win she went to Winco the same day. <laughs> well, what you didn't know is that we were passing notes in the Winco on your demise. <laughs> she's by Bagel Cafe. Oh, she's right down the street, literally. Uh oh. Well, the post office here is sometimes a, a but it'll get here. It will get here. I can go check the mail. Well, presumably she's watching the tracking on it. I need now a piece of paper for under this. I need something. I need some newsprint. I bet I got some newsprint in this box of stuff that didn't sell. Uh. Here I've got some. This will work. I just need it to be a little thicker. I don't know if it's wide enough, though. Oh, oh my God. Out. I just heard I need to pee a little thicker. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we can't be friends anymore. Mm. Although that does kind of sound like something I would say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, well, she's really by the... <laughs> she's... Her house moved. No, she's really by the pedestrian walkway on the Summerlin Parkway. Else knows where everything is. <laughs> but she's, she's a, don't worry. We won't stalk your house. We could just go on Google images. We never have to leave the house. <laughs> right. See, Carla heard it too. It wasn't just me. Oh my God. Fine. Yeah, that's what I'm just slipping in weird shit in the conversation now to see if anybody notices. Well, we're just making sure. <laughs> I don't know. You could be having a stroke in there talking weird. <laughs> well, you'd probably hear me hit the floor. Presumably. No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? All your crap would catch you. No, no, it would go with me. You'd come in and just be feet sticking out like the Wicked Witch of the West. Sherry, I wouldn't put money on that. Uh, remember, we DoorDash. We have codes to just about everything. <laughs> We're not going to stalk you. Oh, my God. Stop stop torturing that poor woman. I she is so nice. Her. I wouldn't stalk her. No, you just go leave weird shit on her porch. Craft <laughs> stuff. Craft stuff. She's not worried. See, she has a taser. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Now you're else proof. <laughs> yeah, I am a little anti-electricity. And you definitely see Andy proof because you'd stop her pacemaker. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I would, I would take Sandy with me. And then when she would tase me, I'd throw Sandy in front of me. Wow. You're such Get a over here, old woman. <laughs> She is the oldest lady in the house. Yep. The grand dom, so to speak. I think she's in her room cussing at us. <laughs> Carla, I have an umbrella. Taser me, I'll pop it open. <laughs> yes, it is good to be working again. That was such a miserable live, I gotta tell you. Didn't work oh. out at all. We took it down. It was. We'll try again next Saturday or the Saturday after that. Whenever Miss Carla is available. Carla's looking at her watch. In about 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Well, it's not like there's not more room on this live. <laughs> Can't you have like six or eight people in here? Uh, I think eight. That Everybody would be get a camera and we could just have a round table discussion. Well, they don't have to have a camera. They just have to uh, just have log in. Yeah, they can just talk. Because you can turn the camera part off. Yep. 
I have mine covered with a sticker that says pretty things inside. <laughs> Mine's covered with a piece of gummy bear washi tape. Yay! Because I'm a gummy bear. Yeah, I'm a gummy bear. I knew that was coming. It's rainbow gummy bears if it makes anybody feel better. Carla, I'm always available. <laughs> That's not what you told that guy on the bus. <laughs> right? I'm just kidding. That guy on the bus probably scary. Well, either that or Carla's getting married next Tuesday at 4. <laughs> oh, no, excuse me, 412. It's the 412. On the bus where they met. Yes. Come on, it's romantic. He's a romantic. It, Besides, it, he can only afford the bus fare for both of them. And that's a stretch. <laughs> well, we're all going to hell. I am going to hell. <laughs> Straight to hell. Okay, so I've got, this is my murder victim. Where the body was found. And that's the car. Okay. You got it all? All we need is a motive. <laughs> really? You need a motive? Yes. My serial killer does. I got to wait for this to dry before I... I'm going to make that There's, into a little pocket to add something else. Your serial else. killer lives with me. Do you need a motive? To kill you? No. I'd be careful if I were you. <laughs> I have to go pick up my don't kill Amy pills. Oh, no. Does that mean there's a chance we're leaving the house? No, they won't be here till tomorrow afternoon. Okay. But good thing for you, I still have three days worth. Well, that is good news for me. Oh, no. You notice they're not don't kill my pills or don't kill, you know. Well, I can't kill Sandy. That's too easy. No, it's not. You just have to think of a really fun way to do it. So that she has a really surprised look on her face when it happens. I'm just going to go in when she's asleep, hook my TENS unit up to her feet, turn it all the way up. <laughs> she's going to come out here any second and whack the crap out of me. No, don't tell her. She doesn't know. It'll be more fun if she doesn't. She just knows something's coming. I like Leah. She's playing with this. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta find out what I heard. I heard nipple warmer. <laughs> <laughs> What's <laughs> what did she hear? Nipple warmer. That's not even close to what was said. What I said was, is if I was going to do you in, all I have to do is sneak in your room at night, hook my TENS unit up to your feet, turn it all the way up. Oh, the TENS unit. I don't know how you got nipple oh, warmer out of that. Like... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, poor Leah. She spit that Diet Coke came out her nose. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait, we should probably fill Leah in on this. Okay, so Leah, uh, a little over five years ago, I knew this crafter who uh, had a situation and needed a place to stay. Don't, if you pass out, we're going to let you fall. And I said to my husband, hey, and he went, it's okay, go. So I drove down to Arizona and I picked up this stray crafter, brought her home. It's the Amy. I've been here for five years. It's a true story. And uh, they can't get rid of me. Almost two to move years out. ago now. I've tried to move out twice. <laughs> God, I can't believe it's been almost two years. Yeah, she'll be two years in August. So almost two years ago, I get a phone call from my oldest friend, been friend since junior high school. And she says, 
He put his hands on my throat. I said, he put his hands on her throat. My husband said, get her a ticket. And she's been here ever since. Well, not only that, she was also living in a tent in the middle of Michigan, outside. Yeah, she was living outside in a tent in the middle of Michigan because that's where her husband had her living. In winter. In winter. Well, it was <laughs> August. It was getting ready to be cold. And uh, yeah, so uh, she got on a bus and came out here. And I picked her up and I can't get rid of her butt either. And so my husband lives in a very weird situation of three's company, only it's the four of us. And as long as his women folks is happy. <laughs> Mike spends a lot of time out back. He gets peace and quiet. <laughs> three menopausal women. Yes. Everyone, every man's dream turned into a nightmare. <laughs> hey, I make breakfast. Yes, I do have a breakfast, wife. God. Carla, ugh, can't be for me as Motel 6. Yes, they are hover sister wives, sort of, yes. Pretty much. Only we don't fight and argue quite as much. Are you sure about that? Are either one of you jealous that the I get to sleep with him? No, no. Love the hover, like my own bed. Yep. So, not like the sister wives. We don't fight. Well, not over Mike. It's my human heater, damn it. <laughs> over the last cookie or, you know. Yeah, the last cookie, the last muffin, the last slice of cheesecake. Um, oh, don't forget you have that. Oh yeah, I got my parfait. Yeah, have that. you got parfait. I had a, I had a, I had an eclair last night. Please never make a reality show, right? <laughs> We're never going to. <laughs> never gonna we'd have, have to. We'd have to call it the crafty anti wives. Crabbers a narcissist and gets curly perms. Oh, you're a narcissist, honey. <laughs> No, I just have really good places to hide. And he works from home, so, you know. <laughs> There's no getting away from Mike. Which is why Amy and I travel frequently. <laughs> so we don't get murdered. <laughs> I have really good places to hide myself. I'm going to one of them now. Let <laughs> me outside. Come on, puppies. Look at him gleefully taking off. <laughs> I know. Is this Monday? Yes. We still have one more full day of him, you know. I know, because he took all those days off. Yes, Janice. It's also why he goes out to the range and shoots things periodically. <laughs> he goes out there and he goes, Sandy, 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 Sandy. L's, 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 L's. <laughs> hey, why am I not getting shot? Is because I make breakfast? Because you make breakfast. Yes, we did get a shamrock shake. Oh. Yes. I'm full. And I can't, the dogs can't have this, right? Because it's got that spicy peanut. Yeah. So just leave it on the counter and then we'll put it away. You can have it tomorrow. I'm going to eat that tomorrow. Yeah, then it'll be gross. I can eat mine up and eat it. I'll put a shower cap on it. Okay. And eat it when I'm hungry later. Yes, he finally did get his shamrock shake. Oh my God. Yeah. Every freaking McDonald's we went to. Our shake machine's broken. I think that's just a lie. Do you want to um, shower cap on yours too, well? No. You want to sit here? No. Okay. Ah. And then I almost killed myself on a rug. Get back to your desk. Stop yelling at me. You're the only person in the room. Well, there's stuff to look at. What are they looking at? My stuff. Oh. It's drying. I got to put a little water in this tea. What's scary is she's not in there, and I swear there's a shadow of a head over her desk. That's the camera. Right? 
Not like I could sneak a dead body in here. Not, not God. The dogs would tell on me. Yeah, they would. She's not sharing her snacks. I know, right? All right, I'm here. Okay. Do you feel better now? Yes. No, there is a good shadow in here, isn't there, tonight? Yes. Mike, See move my shot. lamp. Now I can't get it to do the right thing. I had it all perfect. Is that better? It's spooky. There was like there was a person sitting there, but there wasn't a person there. Cause Mike came in my room last night. I was sleeping on the love seat and he went to turn off the light, but first he somehow felt the need to move my desk lamp. I don't know. He explained the logic to me, but I wasn't awake. He was trying to be a good house mouse. He is a good house oh, mouse. Sweet. But everything in my room is the way it is for a reason. <laughs> Steffi's in the house. <clears throat> Zena is popping in. Hey, Steffi. And hi, um, Zena. This is the ghost of the dead lady's body. Ooh. Else tonight, do you want me to get put a, a sheet out and put it over my head and wander around the house going, ooh. Please remember I sleep with a loaded handgun. No, you don't. You sleep with a Grinch. The handgun's in the drawer. Yeah, I do sleep with a Grinch. He's a cute little Grinch. All right. This is the Amy show for the next 12 minutes. And then we'll talk about murder. Weren't we already talking about murder? No, an actual case. Are we still on Jack the Ripper? Yes. Oh, boy. More Ripper stuff. All right. So I'm muting. I'll be back in 12 minutes. You just love cigarettes more than you love me. No, I love the fact that cigarettes keep you alive. <laughs> Man, everything is going to kill me. I don't even need to go to Australia. Consider me your own personal outback. <laughs> Enjoy. I'll be back. She keeps threatening me. You see, she's threatening me. I don't like it. <laughs> so, I guess everybody had a shitty Monday for the most part. I didn't. I slept in. And uh, I sorted them papers. Hell's the blooming onion. Technically, it's in the craft room because I, I, Hacks Hollow lives in my room. <laughs> okay, so we have all our components for. Our, I think I might need a little map. We have to decide where these flowers are at. Now, the twist to this is this guy killed that lady, and then I killed this guy. That's the twist today. Oh. Hey, it's 6.15 in case you didn't know. <laughs> right, Steffi? Nope, she says she has not gotten into it yet. You know, the first part of the live is always just us shooting the shit, you know? I'm feeling very pockety today. I'm wanting to make everything into a pocket. It needs to be a pocket. Ah, no, can't use that. Ooh, I wonder if this note, that's not right. You know, normally I've got like 
500 pieces of paper in here. Well, I do have 500 pieces of paper in here. None of them are for gluing. Did you watch that? I did not watch the weather forecast. What's happening? You can see him in the car. I buried him in the field next to her. Well, actually, under her. So that he would have to live with what he did. But I think I want to make these into pockets and shove other stuff in there. It could be fun. Um, kangaroos expend a lot of energy. I'm not really a kangaroo. I'm more of a hedgehog or a, I don't know, koala. Koalas are pretty lazy. And they insist on eating something that has no nutritional value. So I, I could be a koala. It could happen. I need to grab a couple pieces of paper. That should work. And that should definitely work. Problem solved. Because it's a magazine image, it needs to be a little thicker. Just a little bit thicker. So we'll glue it down. So um, bills will start coming tonight for the sale and uh, into tomorrow. Let's just admit it. I'm no L's. I'm not a super biller. To be fair, though, she has help. <laughs> Mike helps her. Pouch, not pockets. <laughs> Sloth does not have pockets. No, but they're super scary when they're wet. <laughs> you ever seen a wet sloth? Terrifying. That's what I'm saying. So let's glue these down. So yeah, she did. Uh, so we we're like this is uh, serial killer Jack the Ripper uh, one point three. This is the third volume where we're first we just stuck. Discuss the canonical victims, the the most uh, talked about the uh, victims of Jack the Ripper, and then uh, last week on my channel we discussed some of the suspects, um, which were largely discounted. Uh, you know, they were the early suspects, the people they and that, and then when they did the full due diligence on it. It turned out they were not guilty after all for various reasons, mostly because they weren't in the area at the time the killings were, you know, at various, some for some of them they were, and then for some of them they weren't. So, uh, today she's going to discuss some other possible suspects, I do believe. We're working on a, a, about a month, month and a half long series on Jack the Ripper, a really deep dive. This is one of Elsa's. She's a Ripper file, so this is one of her favorite. She has a lot of knowledge. But y'all need to remember her personal bias in this. She does have a theory of her own. You know, she's got a favorite.
Because everybody who has a theory has a pretty convincing argument. I'd like to see several of these people together in a room arguing with each other about it, you know? Because I don't know enough to... Not that I want to argue with Els about it, but I, th I just think it would be an interesting thing to see. Okay, she's going to go on there. Platypie. Like a wet murder mittens galore. It's just, I don't know, they do so much scarier wet. I saw a picture of one once. I was like, oh, that's terrifying. You know, because when you see pictures of them, they just look kind of, da -der, da -der. Uh, they're slow and they've got kind of a lazy look about them. This It is kind of like when you get a cat wet and you're like, oh, that's a lot skinnier than I thought it was. And the proportions, you know. I'm just going to use the cutter on this. I don't know why I'm working so hard to do that. So we can add some details. And more goodies. Okay. Now we got to ink again. And throw away the trash. Candy, how you doing? Else is going to be back in in a few minutes. She's out having a breaky break. And then she's going to come back in and discuss some more of the Jack the Ripper case. So all these pieces are pretty wet, but we're making progress. Okay. I wonder if there are any map pieces in that box. I wasn't really paying attention to that when I was looking at stuff earlier. Let me put this someplace safe and get out this box again. I made a jelly print today, so ugly I'm mad at it. <laughs> I feel that, Adria. Sometimes you make something, you look at it, and you're like, you have betrayed me. You are ugly. And How ugly you like is it? Me. What? How ugly is it? She's mad at it. It's so ugly. Oh. Did you call it names? Yeah, see, I do that too, Carla. I put things away, you know, so I get a better perspective. But then uh, when I find them, I go, what the hell is this? <laughs> Hold on here. We all need to see this, right? Wouldn't be a day without this one. What is it? Oh, kitty butt. Kitty butt. Yeah, it would be a sad day if we didn't see the kitty butt. Kitty butt. He's like, look at me, I'm glorious. And he does think he is. He thinks he's all that in a bag of chips. No, he thinks he's all that in a bag of catnip. Oh, 
Does he know? Hi, Harry, Jamie. Hold on, I'm trying to get a piece of a map here. <laughs> what the heck was that? That's the hot light. <laughs> that is never not going to amuse me. Never. I know. I know. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> I am so amused by that. So amused. Oh my God. Yes, if they show you their little kitty butts, it's because they trust you. Well, you must trust everybody in that audience a lot because he's always trying to show them his butt. I know. Booty, 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 booty. Look at my booty, booty, booty. Look at my booty, my booty, so my booty. Your light is hysterical. I just, no matter how you slice it. Um. It sounds like Adrian says, it sounds like her old ballerina joints when she goes to stand up. <laughs> it's like it's haunted or something, you know. All right, it's menopause time. What? It's menopause time. I am so hot. I know. I just opened the back door. Uh, I, can't reach, I can't reach the window from here. I should have opened it before I put all that stuff on the bed. I know Mike's trying to take care of us, but I think he's secretly trying to roast us. We're about ready to get part of this. <gasps> no pants? No pants. <laughs> you and Lily and Carla. No pants. Uh, see, you're just teasing everybody. Hurts too bad. Who, who am I murdering? Uh, let's see. How did this go? Hold the phone. This guy murdered that lady, and now they're buried in that field. Because I murdered him. He wasn't a very nice man. And she was a perfectly nice lady. Fully dressed raisin canes. <laughs> You can't sidestep. Well, you said you're at a, a high pain level today, so that sucks. And and she had to work. Boo on that shenanigans. I used to be convinced, and I still kind of am, that my body absolutely hates me. And it's trying to make everything more difficult. Oh no. There's a place on here called Christmas Lake. No, Christmas Valley. Summer Lake. I'm using that side. Wow. Okay. He trusts us with all nine lives. 
Maybe. Possible. It's a possibility. So are you going to regale us with some stuff? I am. Are you? Are you? Are you? Or are you just a big tease? I'm a giant tease. I thought so. I guess we should keep both sides since it's a pockety thing. Let's okay. See. So we talked about leather apron. John Druitt, Michael Ostrick, Kaminsky, and George Chapman, and Thomas Cutbush. So let's talk about <clears throat> Dr. Tumblety. Okay. He was, a, he was not a doctor. Did you just like to call himself that? He was a quack. What does that mean? He flunked out of med school? If he ever went. She got up to get a drink. Started so out of fresca. So he decided uh, he was just going to practice medicine because he thought he was qualified. Yeah. Okay. So I'm slightly so, like armchair quarterbacking, you know. Right. Okay. So here's the story on uh, Dr. Timbalty. Here's he actually has only recently been kind of pushed in as a possible suspect as a possible suspect but then pulled back out so um so what it was is there was a journalist in 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 london who mm -hmm. uh he asked one of the inspectors he wrote him a letter and asked him if a dr d was being suspected if he was being investigated um he was referring to druid which mm -hmm. had been kind of passed around little bits or pieces of it going and eh, maybe possibly could have been i don't know maybe ah uh, possible but he wrote him back saying that dr d had he had never heard of him being mentioned as a suspect um, but he also wrote, um, that he believed he had committed suicide, uh, a lot of these, you notice this, a lot of these suspects committed suicide. Yeah. Is that code for something? I like, I tend to think if somebody might've took the law into their own hands and they went, it was a suicide and used air quotes, but they didn't do that back then. It could have been. Because it's not, it's it's historically accurate that sometimes the police just kill people they thought were guilty to yes. save themselves the trouble. Yeah. So he did tell him that uh, Tumblety had been arrested during his time in England uh, for unnatural offenses. Mm. He was on bail. He skipped, went back to Bologna um, when they never heard from him again. Uh, but it didn't really matter. He, he Shit. got on a boat shortly thereafter, came back to the United States. Um, the Metropolitan Police Department in New York kept an eye on him. And nothing to see similar if he was ever, huh? And nothing similar happened there, but nothing similar happened here. Um, 
So, you know, they, they, they kind of kept an eye to see if, you know, he was going to be traveling back to, to London anytime soon kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the final word on him was that there was no proof that he had anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And the crime that he skipped bail on was not extra extraditable. So okay. what's the deal? But the thing was, is he was a little creepy. First, he's not a medical doctor. Um, he collected medical specimens, including your uteruses. Oh, okay. That does kind of dive a little bit, you know, if you were. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was a guest at a dinner party one time where he like literally went on a rant about fallen women. Okay. Um, and then he took a group of people from that dinner party, a group of men from that dinner party back to his office mm -hmm. uh, and showed them, uh, he had glass jars with uteruses in them from every class of woman from oh. upper crust to farmer's wives, you know? Well, that's not creepy at all. Not at all. Cena, ew. <laughs> I'll second that, ew. It's ew horrific. But... But this is really just the facts, ma'am. You know, this is what happened. Yeah. This is who he was. But it wasn't unusual for people to have that kind of stuff. It is unusual for have for him to have like basically a caste system to his. Yeah. This is a very fine lady, and this is a ho ho. So the case against him has always been very weak. Um. So, you know, he kind of was, you know, thrown out quickly. So now we come to James Maybrick. Okay. And who is James Maybrick? He was, um, he was kind of upper crust. Okay. Okay. So this is this Maybrick is the suspect that came out of the diary from back in the nineties. Okay. Um, you may or may not, people may, may or may or may not have heard of this one, but you know, every now and then there's something that comes up and they go, it's evidence in the Ripper case. The new okay. evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this diary was one of those things. He claimed that he had found uh, this diary Cena, it's sus. <laughs> yeah. It's totally sus. And so this guy finds the diary, gives it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then that person decides he's going to cash in on it. Okay. Now, if you've got the diary, why wouldn't you cash in on it? Right. So you're thinking it might be a forgery? So, yeah, most people have said it is. But, you know, it's a friend of a friend of a friend gave me this. Oh, it's the telephone game. Yeah. So, um, in the book, there's no actual author's name. It's not like this book belongs to yada yada. Right. Um, but due to personal references and checking things out and so on and so forth, they say that the book belonged to a cotton merchant named James Maybrick. He died in 1889. Um, and his wife was uh, arrested and uh, convicted of his murder by arsenic poisoning. <laughs> so... Um, so in the, the diary, there's claims made that, um, this guy Maybrick saw his wife in flagrante, um, 
with an unnamed man in the Whitechapel area. Okay. He calls her, he references her and the, in the diary, the, whoever wrote it references uh, the wife as the bitch or the whore. So not great love lost there. Yes. I love that bitch. To death. Yeah. Um, and so for some reason, according to this diary, um, seeing his wife with her lover caused him to lose his mind and kill five prostitutes. Seems a little excessive. Why wouldn't he just murder her or, or him or them? So the, it contains a somewhat lengthy, long-winded, graphic description of the murders before ending with the assertion, and this is a quote, I give my name that all know of me, so history do tell what love can do to a gentleman born, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Fake, fake news, fake news. So... Um, so whether or not he wrote the diary is what really would put him in or out as a suspect. Right. Uh, this, this has caused a giant rip in the community. In the Did rip. they have any handwriting samples from the real guy? Um, that's the thing, you know, they, they've, they've done some, but the thing is, is back then. You have to remember, handwriting was a very precise thing. Uh, when people learned how to write, by and large, uh, if they went to like preparatory schools and those types of things, which the upper classes did, um, they would have been trained to write each letter in a very specific way. So it's a little bit harder for handwriting back then and the handwriting experts weren't quite what they are today. Okay. Um, so if he wrote it, then he's a suspect. At okay. the very least, he's a suspect. Right. If he didn't, and it's a forgery, then, you know, he has nothing to do with it. So the first thing everybody said, you know, is they discouraged, they discouraged it. They said, it's not, you know, can't be, it's not true, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this guy, Michael Barrett comes forward and says, I wrote it. I forged it. Okay. But then he retracts his confession. Jesus. And then his wife comes forward and says that that diary has been in her family's possession since the Second World War. Okay. So since the 1940s. So it's 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 after. Well, it, but it's been in her family's possessions as long as she knows back as far as that long. So prior to that, we don't know where it is. It doesn't have any. Um, there's no provenance prior to the 19, 1942, early 1940s. Right. Um, so, you know, you're missing uh, about an 80 year gap there, 60 to 80 years. Well, like anybody could have just wrote it on a lark. Right. Anybody back Not then could have written it on a authentic. Lark. Somebody could have been like, maybe that was their story, you know? Yep. What they presumed happened. Excuse me. Um, and there's some of it is good factual stuff. Like when you look at it, it's factual. And some of it can be read to say things that may not have been released to the public. But there was so much um, rhetoric going on right. at the time that you don't know which cop might have slipped and said what to who. Right. 
or if somebody frequented a cop bar and they talked about it, you know? Right. So, um, there were some truths to it, but some of what was written in the book was also blatantly stuff that's been disproven that was just published in the press. So, I think there still needs to be a lot of I think there still needs to be a lot of forensics done. And, you know, now if somebody wants to pay for it, now they can, you know, they can analyze the ink and tell you when the ink is from. Now, a good forger would have gotten ink from the period. Um, but if this was just written on a lark, then they would have just used whatever ink they had at the time. Right. Is it a ballpoint pen? Is it a dip pen? Is it a quilled pen? Is it a metal tipped pen? Does the paper date back? Is the paper to the right time period? Uh, is the binding technique appropriate? Because as we all know, as you know, journalers, journal makers, bindings, they change pretty much every 10, 15 years. You know, the type of glue that they use, the the, the threads that they use, the type of needles, machine, is it machined or is, was it hand done? Because back in the 1800s, very few books were, were machine bound. They were still hand bound um, by and large. So, you know, was the, what, what is the age of the leather on the cover? All of those things need to be taken into account. Um, but there's some things that, you know, just were glaring. Uh, in the case of Mary Kelly, he said that the breasts were found on the side table. They were not. They were under her body. So is he correct? No. He's reporting what the reporters said. So So now there is something else that links him to the, to the murders. Um, and that happened in 1993, which was, a, you know, a year after the diary appear, appeared, a couple of years after the diary appeared. And that is that somebody bought his old watch at an auction. Mm -hmm. And inside were scratched the initials of the five victims and the words, I am Jack. Um, under scientific analysis, yes, they are compatible with the period of 1888 to 1889. But again, that, like everything else in the Ripper case, that's been disputed. But then again, you know, a lot of Ripperologists, the appearance of the watch so close to the appearance of the diary and all the questions that come up, the, the misinformation that's in the diary, those types of things, to me, just it, it excludes him. I think that the I think that the watch was something they were trying to use to concrete this case. Could could you imagine the credibility if you could definitively prove who Jack the Ripper was? Yeah. You know, so yeah, no. I don't think he's in there, but there's a lot of people that have made the, the case for it. Um, so the next one, uh, does anybody familiar with the, uh, the author, uh, Patricia Cornwell? Yeah. Yes. Under boobies. Um, <laughs> Well, technically, Idre, he did give himself the name Jack. Yeah, but it wasn't it proven that those letters were fake? Uh, only some of them. Only some of them. Some of them were true. 
All right. So uh, Patricia Cornwell, she wrote a book called Jack the Ripper, Case Closed, where she went in with some modern forensics and some modern thoughts, and she analyzed the case. Um, one of the case studies she really got into was the uh, artist Walter Sickard. Um, some people say that he did it, that he was an accomplice. Other people say that he just knows who it was. And that he informed on them. Um, but according to Patricia Cornwell, he was Jack the Ripper. So this was her, and this is probably one of the, the latest, it, the book was written in the early 2000s. Uh, it's one of the, the, the latest, most modern looks at it. Um, and, and she had some, some, some strong case pieces here. Okay. She's a good fiction writer, though. I liked her fiction. Yes. Okay. So she put some modern forensic techniques to the case. Um, and she brought out some new things. She, in her heart, believes that Walter Sickert was Jack the Ripper. Uh, he was impotent. Um, and because of that, he was emotionally withdrawn. He hated women. Um, to the point where, yeah, he didn't speak to his mother. He didn't talk to like even family, even female family members shared his, you know, disdain. Um, now there was a case issue. Uh, the reason he became impotent was because he had a series of surgeries uh, for a fistula on his genitalia. Uh, but according to the, the, the medical records, the hospital that he would have had the surgery in did not specialize in that. They specialized in uh, fistulas of the butt. So... So let's look at <sighs> you have to look at can you put him in the area this is this is a sticking point there were no there's no concrete evidence that he was anywhere near england when the murders were committed but what brings him in is this. According to Patricia Cornwell's book, Sickert wrote all, uh, most, if not all, of the Jack the Ripper letters. Now, for years, people have said, oh, this letter was written by this newspaper guy who was trying to sensationalize this. According to Patricia Cornwell, she says those those letters were almost, you know, to the, the totality of them were written by Sickard. And she did some in-depth investigation. Uh, one of the things she did was she took a look at photographs of the original letters. By the way, the original letters have been lost to time. Um, but she looked at photographs of them and had those photographs blown up so that they 
she could look at each individual pixel. Under investigation, they found out that the paper was bonded. It had a specific watermark on it, which was known to be a type of paper that Sickert used exclusively. Um, there were some doodles on some of the Jack the Ripper letters that were compared to doodles that Sickert had made during his lifetime that looked similar. But, you know, how many ways can you draw a stick figure? <laughs> Um, the other thing is, even though she thinks that they were all written by the same person, when you do look at them, there is a case to be made for some of them were written by a hand that was educated. Some of them were written by hands that were less than educated. Um, some of the letters looked like they had shorthand marks in them, which would have been a sign of the newspapers of the day because they didn't write things out verbatim. They shorthanded it. And some of the, the letters look like they had shorthand. So, mm. so she went, she had a uh, DNA test done on stamps and envelopes, uh, which she thinks that he licked court, personal correspondences, things like that. Um, she then looked at DNA that had been saved from the original Ripper letters And one of them had a possible match. So did he do it or did he know somebody who did it? Or was he related? The problem is, is the DNA that they tested for mm -hmm. is actually shared by up to 10% of the population. Mm. That could be a problem, right? So that's a problem. Um, again, back to the paper. Yes, it was paper that he used exclusively, but it was widely available um, from 1985, uh, 1885 to 1887. Um, and he may not have been using that paper in 1888 because he may not have had any more of it. Uh, and, and even though he may have written some of the letters, really, realistically, he only wrote a hoax letter. Um, so that really isn't proven. So the case is not closed. Uh, but if you get a chance, read her book because it's really a good read. And there's a lot of very, um, she did a good job with her research. Yeah, she did. And for what she had, she was basically handed a suspect and she was handed a list of clues and she came to the only logical conclusion based on that so who gave her that information um it was information that she had gathered from talking to people and looking at um uh, like the old police reports and stuff mm -hmm. to see where they were leaning and then looking to see where she could go with it All right. Hi, Kennedy. So now the next person that they put up um, was Charles Cross. Now we've heard that name before. The reason we've heard his name before is he's the one who found Marianne Nichols. Who who found Marianne Nichols? I'm sorry. Um, sorry, I gotta. Uh, Charles Cross, he's the guy who found the body of Marianne Nichols. He has been put forward as a suspect. Okay. So he was on Bucks Row and he came upon the body of Marianne Nichols. Uh, 
this is the first Ripper vi victim, the first of the Conicals. Um, and so when people started to look at him, they were like, well, you know, he was that, that, that was him. Because that was the tour, the story he told, you know, that he came upon the body and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Uh, they kind of went, okay, you're, you're good. They accepted his version of events. However, in 2012, um, Somebody named him. And that the only reason he reported that he found the body was because he killed her and somebody else came along. And so he had to like on the spot, make up a, a story. And he went, I found her here. And the other guy went, holy crap. And he went, let's get the cops. And they went and got a constable and, came back and and that's the thing the other guy came up and went wow and he went i know i just found her here um you stay with the body i'll go get the constable i'll be right back he went off he came back so would jack the ripper come back well he would if he was smart <laughs> because he was putting them off and that's kind of the the theory here um so they think that everything that he said as far as finding the body and how he found the body and how he came upon it and all of this other stuff was all a fabrication and that the coroner's inquest and the police bought it hook, line, and sinker back in the day. And he was taken off the list of suspects and he was now just a witness. But the only thing he could, you know, testify to was that he found the body and how the body was damaged as far as what he saw he couldn't tell you beyond that. And he was smart in not saying anything beyond that. Um, so he fits the bill. He was in the Whitechapel area at the time. Um, he was there going towards the area at the time that the murder occurred. Which puts him, you know squarely in the sights. So he had the same job for years and uh, he was pretty well respected as far as, you know, his, his employer and whatnot. So this is the statement uh, that he gave. On Friday morning, he left home at about half past three to go to work, passing through Bucks Row. He saw on the opposite side something lying against a gateway. In the dark, he could not tell at first what it was. It looked like a tarpaulin, like a tarp. Um, but walking to the middle of the road, he saw that it was the figure of a woman. And this, remind you, is the statement that he gave. Um, at the time, he heard a man about 40 yards away coming up Bucks Row in the direction witness had himself come. Uh, he stepped back, waited for the newcomer, who started on started on one side as if he fears that the witness meant to knock him down. The witness said, come and look here, there's a woman. Um, they both went across to the body. Witness took hold of the hand while the other man stopped at the head to look at her. Uh, the hands were cold and limp. I believe she's dead. And then he touched her face, which felt warm. The other man placed his hand on her heart saying, I think she's breathing, but it's very little if she is. He suggested that they should shift her, meaning in the witness's opinion that they should seat her upright. Um, I'm not going to touch her, uh, says the witness. The legs, the women's legs were uncovered. Her bonnet was off, but her head, but was close to her head. The witness did not notice that her throat was cut since it was dark. But you're going to touch her hands, touch her head, touch her chest, but you're not going to feel any blood. Does anybody else see a problem with that? So they left her there. They went and got the police. Um, 
They told him that the woman was laying in box row. Uh, she looks either dead or drunk. Then the guy says, you know, I think she's dead. Um, the other witness then after leaves. So the coroner says to him, did you see police constable Neal in Bucks Row? He says, no, sir. I saw no one after leaving home except the man that overtook me, the constable in Baker's Row and the deceased. There was nobody in Bucks Row when we left. So he's saying there's nobody there other than the other guy who came up, the dead woman and the constable they went to go find. The coroner, did the other man tell you who he was? No, sir. He merely said that he would have fetched a policeman, but he was behind time. I was behind time myself. So the statements that were given were basically, look, I was in a rush. I saw a body. I, they, I waited for a couple of seconds. Somebody else came down the road. I got them to, to look at it. We both went. To me, this says that they're, he's taking attention off of himself. So he, to me, is a good suspect. Not the best, though. So, <sighs> there was some conflict in the, the, uh, the, the statements. Um, he said that he was walking down the street on the opposite side of Bucks Road. And that he had only gone as far as the middle of the road when he realized it was the figure of a woman. According to the other guy, Robert Paul, who was the other witness, when he got there, he was actually standing where the woman was, not halfway across the street. So what they think is true is that Chris, uh, Cross was the, the murderer, that he was killing Mary Nichols when the second guy came along and Cross went, dude, come and check this out. It's a dead body. Uh, and then, you know, he got interrupted. That's the, the, the prevailing theory on this guy. Uh, so he gave the cops a false name. Cross was not his uh, actual name. Um, he was local. His route to work took him to where almost every single one of the murders was killed, uh, when committed. Um, and he delivered meat for a living. So, they also know that he was present not only at Mary Nichols's crime scene but uh martha tabram not one of the conicals but but he also knew um again he was in the vicinity of the double event which is um elizabeth stride and catherine eddowes <laughs> Must have been dehydrated. She was a lot. Um, so the answer to this one, did he actually, is he actually the Jack the Ripper? This is a um, baby. Possibly. <laughs> Affirmatively? No. It's circumstantial evidence. That's all it is. Um, the fact that he gave a, ba a false name, that's sketchy. Um, but he may have done that because, you know, he maybe owed a debt. 
didn't want to go to the port, go to the workhouse. Uh, maybe he had a warrant and didn't want to be arrested. Uh, maybe he just didn't want to be involved. Maybe he didn't want to be involved. So there's a couple of reasons why he would give a false name. Um, however, <sighs> not my thing. Um, but, you know, if you want to read a little bit about it, um, I would recommend the Jack, Jack, Jack the Ripper, A to Z. It tells you everything about every suspect, every victim, every person on the planet that has anything to do with this case. Okay. Um, uh, oh. So that's where I'm going to leave it. We still have a few more popular suspects to go over, and we're going to go over those before we start to take a real kind of deep look into everything. We're going to get a map of Whitechapel, and uh, we're going to go through it. And then I will tell you who I think did it. <laughs> and I got to tell you, we haven't covered him yet. Yes, yes, I, as a true ripper file, have my own theory on the murder. <laughs> oh, I use thrift books. I love thrift books. Love thrift books. Um, but uh, so far... You know, we've covered probably eight or nine of the suspects. There's uh, probably four or five of them that are popular that are left. And uh, then we'll talk about mine, which is not a popular one. I don't know why. He's a good candidate, man. To write my own book and throw it into the mix, right? Well, there you go. You always wanted to write a book. Yeah, but I want to write a book about something that people actually give a crap about. Well, Kennedy's of a generation that didn't even know Jack the Ripper was real, so. <laughs> what? Her comment was she didn't even know he was real. Uh, okay. That says something about young people. Yes, Jack the Ripper is a real killer. The first, like, real, true serial killer. No, it's not demon possession. <laughs> no, 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 not not an icon, sweetie. He 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 was a real flesh and blood person um at least that is the common now i mean we could have been wrong for all these years it, it could have been you know one guy killed one broad and then uh, you know another guy killed another broad and they all just got lumped together but um i don't think so <laughs> but you know that is a theory too to be honest yeah There's that is one of we haven't we haven't covered any of the theories really yet. Right. But that is a popular theory. That, you know, it was multiple murderers, multiple murders, and uh, that they just got lumped together because... Oh, I'm not picking on you, time. Kennedy. You're not the first young person who who was largely unaware that he's a he was a real person. You just happened to say it in the stream. I'm I'm not trying to pick on you, hon. There are people no. our age that don't know about Jack the Ripper, so don't worry about it. Yep. <laughs> there are plenty of people out there with no real because it partly because it's not, not their jam, but also they don't really teach that stuff in school. That's stuff you kind of have to have an interest of your own. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, this was in the 1880s, 1888 uh, through like 1889. It was a very brief period, but there were five conical victims. There were six or seven other victims that could have been attributed to it, but did not get linked and have not been linked uh, conclusively. But there's still things that, you know, ripperologists look at and go, is it possible? Um they think maybe even one of the conical victims wasn't actually a Jack the Ripper victim, that maybe that victim was killed by her ex-husband. So, you know, they, they just have to look at things. Um, and, and Well, yeah, that is frustrating, Kennedy, because we truly will never know. You can see even when a diary was found, you know, there's no guarantee. Right. In, in this day and age, you can have all the theories you want, but we're really never going to know the truth. Here's 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 the latest one. Probably one of the newest things is the cape, the shawl that supposedly belonged to one of the victims, and they tested that and said, "Oh, it's got men's DNA on it." Well, of course, it's going to have men's DNA on it. She was a prostitute. Um, and, and they tested that against relatives of suspects. And again, the problem with it is, is they're testing the mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA can match anywhere from 1% to 10% of the population. So is it definitive? No. They need to get deep in and, and do the, uh, the male side of the DNA. Because that morphs, and that's the one that you can track... Like you can track feminine, uh, female DNA, mitochondrial DNA. You can track that back. But the problem is, is that every woman that's ever born from the same line has the same mitochondrial DNA. So you're only narrowing down a family, not a... Uh, right. A family line. A line, not the actual family. You have to go over to the other side and actually get into the, the, the very inner workings of the DNA. And the problem. And the truth with is that, that evidence wasn't secured right. You know, exactly. they didn't have the same preservation techniques we do now. That's been handled and rehandled, and there's no way to even say that's the right article of clothing. Yep. Exactly. There's no way to prove there, and there's no provenance. Um, right. It doesn't have a chain of custody or anything like that. Right. For Kennedy, uh, for Kennedy's benefit, provenance or provenance is where you have documentation on an item for what it is art. and where it comes back to. Usually it's art, but it can also be any antique. Like um, if you were going to look at the Royal crown of England, it has a provenance based on certain jewels that are in that came from other pieces and so they're noted as coming from those pieces. So they are able to look at those those jewels and go, oh yeah, there's the old mounting marks where it was put on this piece, or there's the, the piece where it was. So it's a it's a sort of like a chain of, of custody that says who handled you know, it, who opened it, who touched it, where it's been. So this, each time somebody examines it, theoretically it should be noted who did it and what they did and Right. So like um, the Shroud of Turin, it has a provenance. Every time the Vatican allows somebody to open the Shroud of Turin, those people have to put their DNA in the list and their names in the list, their specialty in the list, so that later generations can't come back and go, well, that tracks back to this family line and it goes like this, because they know that that's going to happen. So... A provenance is where it's been, who's had it, who's handled it, who's touched it, how it's been stored, and how it got to here. Um, it's not really going to do anything as far as like, 
we're not going to catch somebody and put them in jail. But yeah, it is whoever fun. is dead now. Yeah, but it is fun to sit around and go, well, I can speculate and say that it was this person. Here's my case for it. Or I think it was this person and here's my case for it. And that's really what Ripperology is about. It's. I think that's the fascination at this point is that you can't prove it, but you can make a good argument. Right. To be, to be, just so you guys know, Patricia's Cornwall's book is called Jack the Riller, Jack the Ripper, case closed. And most people would argue that it's not closed. That you know, that's her theory. Yes. Because, like I said, even after, I mean, there's the the diary and the watch, and that was like, okay, we got it, we got it closed, it's done. Then she writes the book and she's got a totally different thing, a different, you know, slant on it. And now they came out with, you know, this is the, the shawl of Marianne Nichols and, and it was taken directly from her body. And it was given to so-and-so's great, great grandfather by the son of Marianne Nichols. And why would he keep that? Right. That's a thing. Why, why would you keep a bloodstained shawl? that your mother was killed wearing. No, they probably buried her in all of her clothes because that was all she had. Oh, there are victims of the, the, the relatives of the victims, descendants still alive today, absolutely. And and there are people, one of the, the um, one of the great, great grandsons of one of the victims when they came up with the Shaw, he was fully invested. Like he was like, Oh my God, this is the Shaw of one of the victims. Oh, we can finally find out who killed, you know, my great, great grandma. He was fully invested in it. Right, Carla? So, you know, it, there is a, there's a case to be made for just about everybody. Uh, and there's a case to be conflicted for just about everybody, you know, to be denied. Uh, and we just have to... I would say this. You find in, who you believe it is, and that's, that's who it is, you know? Um... For you, that's who it is, unless you change your mind. But there's no, like, scientifically empirical evidence that's going to prove one way or another who it was. It's not like we can go back to the 1800s and, you know, late 1800s and dig up every single body and test them all for DNA. It would be nice if we could go and dig up, you know, the murder victims and test them for DNA and find DNA and then go, okay, well, we think it's this guy and then dig up that guy and go, that's him. But that's not going to happen because one, a lot of these women were buried in unmarked communal graves, which was common. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just going to say, weren't some of the paupers graves uh, more than one person? Yes. So you have um, and then, you know, you have also uh, it, it was a custom to bury a body and then they would disinter that body when it was had gone down to just bone and they would reuse the grave. If you were, you know, in a smaller parish, if you were a poor person, you didn't really buy a grave plot. You rented it. Um, and there were many ways that they disposed of the bodies, you know, the bones and whatnot. So here's the question. Is there really any body to find? And if so, is there any viable DNA left that would be of the, the, the murderer? Because it would have to be on the clothes or on uh, the skin. You know, it would have to be some kind of contact. And I'm pretty sure that by now the material is probably rotted away. There is probably 
99% of the skin is gone. Um, so even if they could find the bodies, the remains of the original victims, they're not necessarily going to be able to find any DNA. And any DNA that they find, again, would have to be suspect based on these women lived in an area that was extremely populated. They were seen to be drinking public houses. So they were bumping up against dozens of people. And then they were prostitutes. So finding men's DNA on them would kind of be like finding chewing gum on the sidewalk. It's going to happen. <laughs> what? Oh, Steffi says uh, her husband is stuck in the hospital room with her. And now Aww. he wants to leave with my channel. <laughs> <laughs> this only happens on Mondays, though. Just be aware. Yeah. Well, that's always good to have a to be read pile, Michelle. I think it's awesome. My great great grandfather was named Jackie Gripper. Moved to the United States from Europe. Didn't like Jack the Ripper at all. No crap, right? <laughs> all right, kids, that's it for me tonight. Next week, it'll be on my channel. That's right. There's a link in the description below. So if you look down at the description. I am Darkwood Sanctuary. You see it says Hags Hollow there? YouTube.com. That's her. Um, so if you don't have that uh, in your, your lineup, make sure that you get it in your lineup so you don't miss uh, next week's suspects. And I think we probably have about three weeks left of this. <laughs> it's going to be a month, month and a half total from start to finish. This is week three. Well, Earl, I have to say welcome. Welcome to the to the party. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Murder Monday. But that is it for me. Hags, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Bright blessings and hugs and hisses to you all. We will see you next week for some more shenanigans. All right. That's it. That's all we have this week. Uh, do us a favor, you know, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, don't forget to go over and like Hags and subscribe to her channel as well. And until we see you again, stay well, our friends. Bye. Bye, everybody. The end. Boink. Yes. I really Push the button. <laughs>